All right, it's time for Red Volcar appreciation video number three. This time we're gonna look at an instrumental called Diminishing Flames. And if you haven't checked the original video out, I will link it up there. So you can check out the full performance before uh, watching this video if you want to. The song is in B flat and it's all based around this, or not everything, but a lot of it is based around this B flat major bar chord here. You're moving out of this shape very much in the song. So look out for that. And um, in the B section it changes up a little bit and goes to a couple different uh, chords, but we'll get to that later. Let's get stuck in here. So that is, is that an expression? I don't know. So before we're really coming into the theme of the song here, it plays a little turnaround. And that is something... It's basically like a jazzy version of... Something like that, that you could play in a blues. This is a jazz version and uh, it would be like in a, a context like... Uh, or something. That was not the best playing I've ever done, but I think you get the point. So the, the turnaround here is based out of this B flat major, as I said, this B flat major chord shape. And you are moving these two notes down and up chromatically, and you're keeping the B flat on top all the time, which means this shape, then move those two down, add the ring finger there, then move those two down further, keeping the B flat on top, and then back up again. It does that twice. So that's just a little intro for the song and then kicks into the main theme here. So let's let's tackle the theme here. Uh, it starts off as a nice B flat uh, chord shape here and First A and D string, you slide from the 7th to the 8th fret, which, which ends up on the 5th and root of the chord here. And then, take the root and 3rd of the chord, which is on the D and G string. Slide it back and forth, um, below the chord and up to the chord, twice, and then you bar with your ring finger here, uh, the 8th fret of the G and B string and uh, down to the 3rd and 5th of the chord. So that part of, of the phrase is... And then... Same thing as before. And there we are moving uh, the 3rd and 5th of the B flat chromatically down two frets, which ends up being the uh, fifth. This is an awkward chord to take <laughs> or to play. That's why it doesn't play the full chord. But that is an F7 chord. And it is the fifth and the flat seven of that F7 chord, which uh, the tune moves or uh, goes to an F7 there. So it's B flat. And then F7. Uh, then it hits that low low F there. Just hammers on from an open string to first fret on E string. Uh, then this is still out of that F shape. But you're playing the third and the fifth of the chord instead. And that is on the 7th fret and 5th fret of the D and G string. And then the melody note there is on the 
eighth and sixth fret of the B string. So, I think he might be plucking both, both the G and B string for the melody there. But he might just be playing the B string by itself. And then comes the first really kind of strange, strange part of the song. He also always throws in some, some weird, some weird shit. <laughs> now that is a phrase, right? <laughs> so this is sort of an F13 chord shape. You're pulling off the, uh, whatever uh, you're using for the sixth or the thirteenth of the chord here. That's the same note, by the way. So, pulling off, then moving up three frets. Just move up in minor thirds, three frets at a time here. So that works as a diminished idea. Uh, that is this and this riff, I guess, is part of the uh, the name, <laughs> Diminishing Flames. Uh, because he's using a couple of diminished ideas here. And um, after that, he, he ends up on the B flat, uh, or the B natural uh, 13 position there. And then a little melody on the E string. 10th fret of the E string slides down and pulls off to the 5th fret of the E string, 8th fret, 6th fret. I think that's the whole, whole melody, melody there. Yeah, I'm just it is doing that quite a bit in this song. It's really kind of a cool little move. Then I think the theme plays one more time here. So it's a slight variation here, where we're gonna talk about the whole thing here. So the kind of variation of the theme, uh, or the second half maybe, uh, or whatever you want to call it is, So far, we're just playing what we played before, but then it goes to... So that is, is just moving up in, uh, note, uh, in string pairs uh, through the B flat chord here. So it's G and B string, uh, B and E string, and then he ends up on the E flat chord. Here the tune actually moves to E flat with the bass as well, and it just plays that those two notes that we played before here. It's the 8th fret on the G and B string, so it's... And then the tune moves to a diminished idea, I think. Basically an E diminished, or... Uh, you can, of course, move diminished, as I said before, in minor thirds, which means that it's the same chord. The E diminished is the same as G diminished. It contains the same notes. You can hear the band here. I think the bass player. I think the bass player is is kind of rising, like uh, maybe doing something like that, while Red plays kind of a falling idea. So they, you know, they uh, kind of cross each other. I have a fly in here. <laughs> Be gone. Anyways. So where were we? we <laughs> where were we? I tried to say. Yeah, the diminished idea here. So it's all out of this um, diminished arpeggio here, and you're basically jumping around in that a little bit here. So it's between the sixth and ninth fret. Oh, you're gonna use the E, B, G, and D string. But starting on the E string, we're moving chromatically up from 6th to the 9th fret. 
So that's the um, all four notes out of the arpeggio here. That's 9th fret E string, 6th fret E string, 8th fret B string, 9th fret G string. And then sliding up to the 6th uh, fret of the E string again. Same notes on the way down and then you add the 6th uh, fret of the G string. And then slide up to the 8th fret of the B string. Same notes on the way down and up on the 8th fret of the D string. Um, I think it might include the 5th fret of the D string as well, that, that's just the next note in the arpeggio. But it kind of subtly hints at it maybe, because it's not really an obvious note in, in there. So it's just accenting uh, the start notes of the phrases so some notes pop out a little bit more because otherwise it would sound really dull that's that's not something anybody wants to listen to maybe <laughs> so that's music <laughs> you know <laughs> um, and then he, he finishes up with a kind of a B flat major phrase and that is 8th fret G string, 7th fret, 5th fret, and the same frets on the D string, and then 5th fret, yeah, that's here. Yeah, you're not down to the 5th fret on the D string here. Uh, you move down to the 7th fret of the D string, and then 5th fret G string, and the root note on the 6th fret of the D string, 8th uh, fret of the D string, <laughs> sorry. I think that's the whole th um, A section of the song here. And the whole thing plays one more time. Good time for a water break. Section. Let's take that part first here. He's using the the tune goes to A, maybe A7, but it's just outlining an A chord to D minor, A to D minor. Then it moves to later on it moves to a G7, C, C minor. F7. So uh, if you are familiar with the circle of fifth, you will, re you will realize that's all he's doing is just basically moving through the, the circle of fifth there. But let's start on the A to D minor uh, phrase here. He's basically just playing an A, A arpeggio here ends up on the third of the D minor. So it's, it's only these two bar chords that you're probably very familiar with. On the fifth and seventh fret uh, and sixth fret as well. But so and it moves down through the D minor scale. Ends up on the uh, seventh fret of the uh, G string. And then it plays the same phrase again, basically, but quadruples each note. <laughs> it plays four times on each each string here, and then he just lands on the uh, on the uh, F note here, sixth fret on the B string. Yeah. So here the song moves to uh, the G7 and plays the high A here, 5th fret of the E string and then moves chromatically from the 7th to 4th fret of the G string and then back to the high E string, 
fifth and third fret, kind of a fifth fret, and then quickly three, five, three. And then comes a cool move here. That's really, really cool. It uses this in the solo as well here. But here it is the fourth and fifth fret. You slide up to those. And then move the fifth fret of the E string down to the fourth fret. And then fifth and third fret B string and E string. So that little section is. And then you're on the C major chord here. So he's just moving down in pairs again here, string pairs. First B and E string, then G and B string, and then D and G string. Ah. And let's see where he goes there. Yeah, the C major ch changes to C minor at that point, and he plays. So it also moves to F7 there, but the C minor part is. So that is just like a C minor chord there, bar chord. Third fret and hammer onto the fourth fret of the B string. And you're playing the E string there as well on third fret. And then fifth fret G string, fifth fret D string. And then it comes a slick little hammer on pull off lick here again on the third and fifth fret of the uh, G string. And then you slide down to the second fret of the G string. That's where it moves to the F, I think. Uh, around that point, at least, is starting to move through the F chord here. Uh, the uh, second fret G string, and then third fret, second fret, first fret of the D string. And then comes the a little bit spicy <laughs> F7 sharp 5. So that's basically like the 13 chord we used before. But you have that uh, lowered to the sharp 5 instead. So that uh, chord is 1st fret D string, 2nd fret G and B string. And I think it gives it a bit shake there. That C minor to F7 phrase is, if I play the whole thing a bit slower, the theme, the second part of the theme. <laughs> so that, that was just the uh, uh, like A2 section uh, or whatever you want to call it, second part of the A section and then I, for the start of his solo just hits this this poisonous chord <laughs> really really an amazingly dissonant chord as the thumb resting over the F note here on the first fret of the E string then it, that mutes the A string and he has the middle finger on the second fret of the D string the first finger is on the first fret on both the G and B string but not on the high E because that is an open, open string. I have a bit of a hard time playing that because I have quite small fingers, but sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but you can, I heard Adam Levy talk about this. He's a great, great guitar player. Uh, also teaches a bit on YouTube. And he said, if you try to hit the, the wood in between the strings, instead of trying to hit both of the strings, that, that mostly uh, that works most of the time, and yeah, that's a good tip. Um, but I think the reason why he plays the uh, <laughs> why he opens his solo with that chord is 
to really kind of do a clear marking where the solo begins like okay from this point it's it's a solo we're mixing things up here because since it's an instrumental it's just it's it's not a verse chorus verse chorus and then solo it's melodic themes and then solo so it maybe it's for the uh, for the <laughs> to help the audience know where where the different sections of the songs are because when it's instrumental instrumental it, it can be quite hard to know what is the melody of the song and what is the the solo sometimes um, if you're not familiar with the song of course but yeah a little rant there uh, after that chord he plays <laughs> what we can see here is a, quite a big stretch there but let's see how it sounds here I'm gonna rewind a bit so that is it's out of this B flat chord shape there on, uh, on the third fret of the D, G, and B string. You're plucking all at the same time. You're moving up on the D string from the third fret to the fifth fret to the seventh fret while plucking the third fret of the G and B string. And after that, but, uh, I, can tell, uh, I can say that it ends up being um, the major seven of the chord. So that is the same as that note of a normal major 7. It's just a pretty voicing of it. And then he plays D minor 7, uh, D flat minor 7, C minor 7. That's a that's a cool move. Ah. <laughs> so he's playing C minor seven, D minor seven, and then E flat major, E major, F major. But he's he's doing a muted hybrid picking of of everything here. So it's uh, and that you have to mute with the left hand. You have to lift the once you play the note you lift it from the fretboard so you get this because you can't mute that with the, the with the right with the right hand to make it sound that fast and muted so i don't know if we can slow it down but like that basically <laughs> Something like that, and then he just ends up with <laughs> a big, uh, big augmented chord here. Basically, F augmented. It's on the eighth fret of the A string, seventh fret D string, sixth fret on the G and B string there, just quickly, and that functions as the uh, five chord. Basically, that that's like an F seven, just augments it instead. Let's see where it goes from uh, from there. <laughs> yeah, another another cool chord here and that is also a sort of F7 chord. I'm guessing that's what he's what he's thinking at least here. And that is if you were to play the regular voicing of the chord, you would have the root on the 8th fret of the A string, but he's not playing that note, he's playing the rest of the voicing and adding a color note to it as well. And that would be of F7 flat 9, would that be? So it's 7th fret of the D string, 8th uh, fret of the G string, 7th fret of the B string, and then the color note on top is the D note here, 10th fret E string. And, and the same as in the theme here. Slide down and pull off to the 5th fret of the E string and then 8th and 6th. The 
this little phrase is based out of the, the uh, B flat major pentatonic, basically. It's on the 6th and 8th fret of the E and B string, and then 7th and 8th fret of the G string. It's one of those quick little pull, uh, hammer on pull off things again on the E string. And then the 3rd uh, of the B flat is 7th fret of the G string. And then move chromatically from 8th to 6th fret on the uh, B string. And then 8th uh, fret G string, 6th fret B string, and then I think it slides 7th fret on the G string. Slides up to the 7th fret G string, and then 6th fret of the B string. I'm gonna rewind a little bit here. So that is one of his uh, trademark voice leading things, or chromatic passing toads, you can also call it, but is moving from the B flat through B flat augmented to the E flat here. So it's, that's just out of the B flat chord shape, adding that little ninth on the, on the eighth fret of the uh, E string. And then the chromatic passing tone, part of the augmented chord, is on the 7th fret of the B string, back to the 6th fret of the E string, and up to the E flat chord shape here, on the 8th fret of the B string. So it's... or whatever the phrase is. Like that, I think. So that's a real nice way to to lead the listener over to the next chord. I, I love that sound. And just the diminished the diminished idea here from the th a theme, but he ends up. Let's see here. It sounds like it's just playing the B flat major scale from the fifth. So it's starting on the F, and then that's the eighth fret of the A string, and then fifth fret D string, sixth, uh, seventh fret D string, eighth fret D string. Same on the G string, and end up on the uh, the uh, the notes we used before here: sixth fret of the B string, eighth fret. So that, that little finishing phrase there is slide up to the 8th fret B string. 6th uh, fret B string, 8th uh, fret G string, 6th fret B string, slide up to the 7th fret G string, land on the 8th uh, fret D string. That is a hard lick to play. I've uh, I've worked a bit on this lick. <laughs> and yeah, it's it's just not happening for me. Ah, uh, <laughs> it's so hard to play. It's out of this uh, uh, A chord or A uh, arpeggio up here. It's the ninth fret of the G string, tenth fret. B string, 9th fret, uh, E string. It's out of that shape. It's, it all centers around that little slide between the 9th and 8th fret of the G string. And then place these notes on top of that. So it's the first note it adds is the, that 10th fret of the uh, B string. Back to the G string, then 12th fret of the B string back to G string, 9th fret of the E string, G string, and then 
12th and 10th fret of the E string. Just plays that twice. And that is, well, that's something you, you can work on and uh, I hope you get it better, better than I do here. <laughs> That ain't happening. <laughs> so that little downward motion uh, in these this little dyads that I guess you could call it, double stops he's playing is that's the same same lick we played in C before, but it, here it is. Uh, in G instead. So it starts with 11th fret B string, 12th fret E string. Then you move the E string down to the 11th fret, and then move both around <laughs> so 12th and 10th fret, the B and E string. That's out of this G chord. And then it moves down to the next G chord here. So learn your shapes, <laughs> learn the arpeggios all over the fretboard and you, uh, you will be on your way to play like red. <laughs> but I, I made a video recently um, with, uh, with an exercise to get you to uh, become a bit more familiar with all these chord shapes. It's, you, can, you can tell that red obviously knows his, uh, his chord, chord shapes very well. But moves from this chord shape down to this chord shape. So it's... And that is just, again, with the string pairs, uh, the 8th and 7th fret of the B and E string, and then 7th fret of the G string and 8th fret of the B string. And the next part is... I'm just gonna double check, but I, I'm pretty sure that's it. So that is 10th uh, fret of the G and B string, 9th and 8th fret, 7th and 6th fret, and 5th fret. Yeah, that's, that's when the tune moves to C, of course, yeah. That's quite, quite obvious now I think of it, because he lands on the, the C. And uh, it's just C uh, diatonic um, dyads, I guess. Just moving and landing on, on the right chord tones there. This is where the tune goes to C minor and then to F7 again. And it plays C minor 7, regular chord shape there. And color notes on top there, or melody note, is 6th fret and 3rd fret of the E string. Back and forth. And then to so that F, um, F7 sharp 5. It's just playing, I don't know if it. That's the root there, but it plays the bottom four or the top four strings. I mean, so it's the first fret, second fret, second fret, first fret, and adds the color notes or melody note there on the third fret. So the melody of that phrase is, I think. And back to the theme here. So the ending, uh, he's playing the second part of the, the A section and then he repeats And then 
like he did on the E string uh, several times before he plays on the A string instead. So hammer on to the first fret and then that deadly chord again. A little tremolo there, or not tremolo, but yeah. Add a little trill on the first fret of the open E string there. That's basically it, right? Uh, it's an awesome song. I, I really, <laughs> really think it's a cool little catchy instrumental. And uh, since transcribing it yesterday, I, I played it quite a bit just for fun. And uh, it's, yeah, it's a cool tune. So if you, uh, if you want to help support the channel, um, please, please check out my PayPal link. I think I have it in some corner here and down in the description as well. I really appreciate it if you consider donating a little little tip for me and uh, it would also help me a lot if you like the video and um, maybe share it with any of your guitarist friends. But that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.